and Britain had more work for South Africa, north this time, to deal once and for all with von Lettow. London turned to South Africa's defence minister to lead the campaign, Yanni Smuts. Smuts too had fought in the Boer War, but was now passionately pro-British. More a statesman than a soldier, Smuts made an indifferent general of conventional forces. And he was up against Letov. British officer Richard Meinertzhagen was now Smuts's intelligence officer. Smuts is quite determined to avoid a stand-up fight. He told me he could not afford to go back to South Africa with the nickname Butcher Smuts. If von Letov is clever and Smuts not clever enough, there's going to be trouble. Letov was clever. Here, at his headquarters at Moshi Railway Station, he thought through the idea of depriving Britain of manpower in Europe by opening up the war in Africa. The question was, could we, with our small forces, prevent considerable numbers of the enemy from intervening in Europe or inflict substantial damage on their armaments and troops? I strongly believed that we could. By August 1916, Letov had become expert at his cat and mouse game. Von Letov is slippery and is not going to be caught by maneuver. He knows the country better than we do. I think we're in for an expensive hide and seek, and Von Letov will still be cuckooing somewhere in tropical Africa when the ceasefire goes. Smuts has cost Britain many hundreds of lives and many millions of pounds. Letov ran his force of up to 15,000 soldiers, mostly black, on scrounging and improvisation. No supplies from Germany reached him after March 1916, but he made a little go a long way, as Ludwig Depper, one of his medical officers, noted. When there was no ammunition, Letov would try to produce his own cartridges. If the men asked the commander for weapons or clothes, they were told, take it from the enemy. Letov made war at cost price. You'd have been justified in displaying this war at a country fair with a for sale sign. Cheapest war in the world. Yanni Smuts had five times Letov's force and resources to match. But the further he went into German East Africa, the more stretched his supply lines and he reckoned without the killer Tetsi fly. The life expectancy for his 50,000 horses was just four weeks. Torrential rain, mud, dust and boiling heat further slowed his progress. Intelligence was sketchy, maps inadequate. Telephone cable often had to be raised to eight meters to avoid damage by giraffes. This is like warfare of bygone days. We come along where no road had ever been, where probably white man had never trod before. The river is in flood and we can't get across. On the other side, the German patrols are watching us, but the crocodile hold the peace between us very successfully. Letov played with Smuts, refusing to fight, slipping away, luring him deeper into Africa. As they went, they spread the war's grief and destruction, dragging in more and more of the people of Africa. This war was being carried on the backs of black Africans. For the Letov campaign alone, the British recruited over a million black porters. One in five died from malnutrition and disease. Death rates comparable with those on the Western Front. 
they endured their ordeal quietly. They only had duties and hardly any rights. They tumbled into the splashing mud with their heavy loads and were then ruthlessly forced to move on and catch up. Oh, the Lindy Road was dusty and the Lindy Road was long. But the chap what did the hardest graft, who could not do but wrong, was the Cavarondo Porter with his Cavarondo song. It was, come here, Porter. It was, Amera, here, get. And Amera didn't grumble. He simply did his bit. What Smut saves on the battlefield, he loses in hospital. For it is Africa and the climate we're really fighting, not the Germans. Out of 20,000 South Africans, over half were invalided home by the beginning of 1917. They were replaced by black troops from Nigeria and Ghana. Recruitment of blacks soared in East Africa as well. Over the course of the war, the King's African Rifles rose from 3,000 men to 35,000. Fololiani Longwe spoke for many black soldiers. Think of yourself buried in a hole with only your head and hands outside, holding a gun, death smelling all over the place. Listen to the sound of exploding bombs and machine guns, smoke all over and the vegetation burnt, and of course, deforested. Watch your relatives getting killed, crying, finally dead. These things we did, experienced, and saw. Letov survived undefeated to the very end, marching triumphantly through Berlin in 1919. The British never caught him, even though they turned it into an African war and set an army on his tail. 